Hello everybody, it's me, Ash, here to remind you that February 2nd is Groundhog Day. And to celebrate the momentous American holiday, as well as the movie of the same name, we're going to answer one of the most feverishly asked questions in cinematic history. Just how many days does Phil Connors spend trapped in the perpetual loop of Groundhog Day? If this feels like a somewhat familiar video from us, well, all I can say is that at least it's thematic, right? So, director Howard Ramis has sort of already answered this question on the DVD commentary of the film, with what he thought to be 10 years. And then later, in response to several sites online running an article that came to an answer of just 8 years, 8 months and 16 days, he offered the following contradictory answer, and I quote, I think the 10-year estimate is too short. It takes at least 10 years to get good at anything, and allotting for the downtime and misguided years he spent, it had to be more like 30 or 40 years. Fair enough, Mr. Ramis, but since when did we ever let something as trivial as the word of the creator get in the way of a good opportunity to deliver the what culture version of the truth? As you'll see, we might not agree with this estimate at all. This process will be broken up into handy stages as I go on so I don't trip over myself trying to do the maths. So, right, here we go. Stage 1, days shown on screen. The first stage is to work out how many separate days are shown on screen during the movie. So, here's a good old-fashioned list of them. Day 1, Groundhog Day. Day 2, the first repetition. Day 3, the fixed pencil. Day 4, punching Ned. Day 5, deceiving Nancy. Day 6, robbing the bank. Day 7, seeing Heidi 2 with a French maid. Days 8 to 12, engineering the near-perfect date. Day 13, the bad perfect date. Days 14 to 21, one for every slap. Day 22, Phil, you look terrible. Day 23, Jeopardy. Day 24, this is pitiful. Days 25 to 27, breaking the alarm clock. Day 28, kidnapping punks a tawny Phil. Day 29 to 31, Phil's suicides. Day 32, I'm a god. Days 33 to 35, first piano lessons. Day 36, sexually harassing Ned. Day 37, looking after the homeless man. And day 38, the final Groundhog Day. So, by that reckoning, that is 38 separate days shown in the movie. This is of course assuming that every separate thing listed above happens on separate dates, which I don't think is too much of a dangerous assumption given that Phil is something of a quitter. The second and far more difficult stage is to take things Phil says as indicators for the other days we don't see. So, stage 2, days mentioned. Phil tells us he has been stabbed, shot, poisoned, frozen, hung, electrocuted and burned. Electrocution we saw, but the other six account for an additional six dates, uh, assuming they weren't on the same day because, you know, he dies. Which brings the running total to 44 days. But then that isn't factoring in the number of days of perpetuation that it would take to force a man who is already thoroughly depressed to attempt suicide. It's a delicate matter, but since Phil is an entirely self-centered man trapped in his own idea of hell and surrounded by hicks, you'd have to wager that normal circumstances wouldn't apply. He gives up living by their rules on day 3. So let's factor in 20 more days at this point. That's 64 so far. And then there's a scene where Connors tells Rita exactly how long it would take to learn how to expertly throw playing cards into an upturned hat, which is six months. Specifically, four to five hours a day to be an expert. So that is six months added to the 62 days, bringing the running total to 244 days if we take a month as 30 days. The insightful lines don't stop there though. Next up is a scene in which Phil takes a companion in a French maid outfit to see Heidi 2 at the local cinema, and teasingly says, It's like I said, I love this film, I've seen it over a hundred times. There's another hundred days then, because seriously, who would see the same film twice in the same day? Especially when it's Heidi 2. That makes our new total so far 344 days. Add to that two full days of Jeopardy watching to be able to perfectly recite the answers and you have 346 days total. Then, of course, there's the diner scene in which Phil explains to Rita that he is stuck reliving Groundhog Day and uses his extensive knowledge of the other diners to prove his point. We're going to give each person a day since he clearly knows a lot about them, aside from Nancy as she's in the original 38 on-screen days. So that's a day each for Doris the waitress, Debbie and Fred, Phil the waiter, Gus the drunk ex-sailor, Tom the former coal miner and Alice the waitress, totaling six additional days bringing us to 352 days. And finally, in this section are the few odd bits and pieces mentioned on screen that would have taken some time, including sourcing a Rolls Royce and cowboy outfit in small town punks at Tawny and meeting his French maid companion, as well as discovering the candy store, finding out that Rita likes Rocky Road, and generally learning everything else there is to know about her. Conservatively, that's going to be a hundred extra dates, most of which would be spent in Phil's attempts to find out as much about Rita as possible to give her the perfect date. Keeping up, we're on 452 days already. 
Next up, the number of days Phil takes to learn things. Stage 3, Days Spent Learning, Volume 1. So this is the third stage of the operation, taking the things Phil achieves on screen that imply he has spent time learning new skills and attempting to use educated guesswork and other reference points to work out how long each achievement might have taken, armed with nothing more than Google and a healthy curiosity. First, there are the big two, learning how to make ice sculptures and how to play piano from scratch. The ice sculpture business is pretty difficult to quantify, though you'd assume that being in show business he has some interest or background in art, so even if he went in as an ice virgin, he might learn faster than another person. I'll assume he's also self-taught, which is bound to take some time. Ice sculptors can only call themselves top of their game due to 25 years of experience, for example, and portraiture's got to be the most difficult style to master. In conjunction with that, Malcolm Gladwell has stated that it takes anyone 10,000 hours to become an expert at any one subject. And Phil is clearly an expert ice sculptor, since the ice sculpture is the one thing in Groundhog Day that is entirely quantifiable by what we can see on screen. As playing one song well does not make anyone an expert pianist, for example, and speaking one French poem perfectly is not an indicator of expertise in the same way. Broken down, that is an hour a day for 27 years, but we know Phil by now, and we know that when he figures out that something gets him closer to fourth base with Rita, he is likely to pursue it a little more rapidly than that. So I'm going to suggest an average of four hours per day, based also on his willingness to stick to four or five hours of card flicking for six solid months and the impending threat of frostbite over longer periods. Which brings that to just under seven years, based on him working for consecutive days for that whole time, or more likely ten years sticking to a traditional five-day-a-week working directive. It is a giant leap to the next running total then of 4,102 days. And then there's learning the piano. Again, you have to consider that 10,000 hours to become an expert, but we're not entirely sure he knows everything there is to know about piano since we don't see a lot of it on screen. So let's call him an exceptional pianist, three quarters of the way to expert with 7,000 practice hours. At the level he is clearly playing at at the end, he must have been putting in two or three hours of practice a day at least. Any more and he'd be in severe danger of carpal tunnel syndrome or tendinitis, though not every day for the same medical reasons. That breaks down to about seven and a half years playing for between two and three hours a day, every day. But I've already said I'm working on the basis that he sticks to the habit of five days on and two days off, which makes it ten and a half years or thereabouts. Hey, we've hit Harold Ramis' original number. Ten and a half years equals 3,833 days, and a new running total of 7,935. Of course, those aren't the only things Phil learns. So with that in mind, the next stage is to explore the further achievements of Phil in the name of bettering himself. Stage 4, Days Spent Learning, Volume 2. It's implied that Phil has learned French when he recites French poetry to Rita, but then at this stage in the film, Phil has shown that he is more than willing to use deception to get into her pants. So what's to say that he didn't simply spend a couple of days learning how to perfectly recite the one passage he picks to impress her? Being fair to Phil, though, let's accept that he took lessons, given that Ramis himself has also confirmed that Phil learned the language and he says we himself when asked. So taking into account the fact that America has only about 1.6 million French speakers and isn't strictly speaking a francophone nation, and the fact that Pennsylvania had no historical French settlements, it would presumably have been much more difficult for Phil to learn the language than it would have been somewhere with a large French-speaking community. With that in mind, and also the fact that Phil is an adult learner and is less susceptible to learning a second language quickly, a conservative estimate based on the idea of him taking lessons every day is that it would have taken somewhere around 12 years to become completely fluent. Expats living in francophone countries sometimes state it takes even longer than that, so we're being quite generous, but our running total shifts to 12,315 days on that estimate. On from that, not only does Phil learn things to rue Rita, he also becomes selfless, as indicated by the quote from Felix's wife. Dr. Connors, I want to thank you for fixing Felix's back. He can even help around the house again. Hang on, he fixed his back? When exactly did you find the time to learn enough in the medical field to fix the back of a man so incapacitated that he couldn't even help around the house? Oh, yeah, right. Stuck in an infant cycle of time. Mm, that would do it, yeah. Well, I wouldn't think he'd actually gone to medical school, as there isn't one in Punxsutawney, and he had just ended up doing the first day induction over and over again, even if he managed to get into one. Neither would he have done the required four years postgraduate study to become a specialised chiropractor. You have to wonder how long it would take an unqualified TV presenter to master chiropractic to that level, or at least enough to just about wing it. 
This one has to be pure speculation, though there is a useful teach yourself chiropractic video of 100 minutes, which you'd think Phil would have to watch at least five or six times to learn off by heart. A low number in itself, since he would have some familiarity with learning lies quickly. It's probably also reasonable to suggest that Phil would have read up on the subject before attempting to administer off-the-cuff medical attention on a frail-looking elderly gentleman. Say, 20 days to be safe. Adding to the time it took to source the video, no more a suspension of belief required than his acquiring WWF tickets, and the probable few times he practiced on Felix and it didn't quite work out as planned, and assuming each failed attempt then spoiled the rest of his day, I would say a very rough bare minimum estimate of 26 days to learn to fix Felix's back. So far, that is 12,341 days. These periods of learning could overlap, but really it is not entirely sure that they would. Clearly, you wouldn't want to learn the piano after spending a few hours learning to sculpt ice, which would necessarily be a morning activity given the lower temperatures and appropriate lighting. And further, given Phil's professed dedication to each subject, his spending six months learning to throw cards into a hat proves an invaluable benchmark, I don't think it would be likely that he would learn each thing in one long, crammed period of time. You have to remember, at this stage he is learning piano and ice sculpting, he has seemingly abandoned his desire to leave Punxsutawney and is reveling in the infinite possibilities for self-advancement. So, there. Anyway, ignoring the good that he does for a minute, Phil does himself some badness too. Chief among those naughty activities, he robs a security van outside the bank, thanks to a Rain Man style plan. His impressive knowledge, perfect to the exact minute detail, seemingly implies an extended period of research, including failed attempts, presumably also including him being run over by the car, which could not have been feasibly shorter than six weeks in our opinion. Running total, 12,383 days. The final stage of this whole operation is breaking down what Phil achieves in his final Groundhog Day, and working out how long each soul-saving gesture would have taken. Stage 5, The Gesture Days. So, to those soul-saving gestures, the real things that get Phil out of his perpetual loop rather than the things he learns in order to get into Rita's underwear. Here's how it could work. Saving a falling child would have a day to hear about the accident and find out where it happens, a couple more days to investigate and maybe two more to get the timing perfectly right to a T, which is five days. Changing the old lady's tire requires him being in the right place and finding a tire and a jack, so one day. Saving Buster means he needs to discover when and where Buster chokes and learn the Heimlich maneuver, which is two days. And then there's getting a couple of WWF tickets. It's entirely improbable, but one day to find out they enjoy WWF, one day to find out you can't get tickets within the same day, with a blizzard no less, and then two full days to somehow source some tickets within the town itself, which is four days total. The total for all of those selfless acts is 12 days of hard work. This brings us to the final count of 12,395 days, or in other words, 33 years, 350 days. So if this maths is right, and it probably isn't because I'm the one doing it, it should be something like 413 months, 1,766 weeks, 12,395 days, 297,480 hours, or 17,848,800 minutes. So the next time you're asked, hey, just how many days does Bill Murray spend locked in a perpetual time loop in Groundhog Day, you can answer with one of those listings. I can't do them again. The numbers, there's too many. It's like the, the meme with the woman and the numbers. That's me. Oh. Anyway, almost 34 years. That is a far shout from that eight-year figure banded about in the thing we mentioned earlier, and even further away from the 10,000 years that was supposedly mentioned in the initial drafts of the film. We've gone through all of this effort, though, to find out that Harold Ramis was near right enough in the first sodding place, so there you go. 30 to 40 years. Bang on. Bang on, fella. Bang on. For anyone who wants to check all of this, I really don't suggest watching Groundhog Day in this manner. It is not the best way to enjoy what is essentially a light-hearted comedy that is loads of fun, whose metaphysical concerns are supposed to be enjoyed and not worked out mathematically. Mm. Normal people should just be happy to watch and accept that Phil Connors is still repeating his one day endlessly over and over until he finds himself. Leave the bad counting to me, to us, and I should say Cy Gallagher, who wrote this lovely, lovely piece and did all of the hard work, so thank you, Cy. And that, dearest watchers, is how many days Bill Murray spends in the time loop. Let us know what you think in the comments section below and what you would do if you had nearly 34 years to spend on a single day. I've been Ash, this has been What Culture, and we'll see you again soon. Perhaps very soon. Hello everybody, it's me, Ash, here to remind you that February 2nd is Groundhog